The period from the 900s through to the 1600s when the Catholic Church was at its most powerful is known as the Dark Ages. There was virtual slavery amongst all of the people in all of Europe and virtually unlimited brutality and abuse in every country in the Roman Catholic world. There was no freedom of thought allowed under penalty of death. There was no progress in medicine or useful sciences in all that time. Well over 90% of the people, actually, if we were really looking at it, well over 95% of the people in all Catholic countries were unable to read and write, never attended school of any sort, type, or description, had nothing. You might have one change of clothes, but most of the time you just had the clothes you wore. The people were suitable by their uneducation, lack of progress, whatever, they were made suitable to be peasants and to fight in wars, but it left their, the Dark Ages left their lives dark, and brutal, and ignorant. One of the early revolts against the worldly power and spiritual tyranny of the popes and the Catholic Church was by people called the Cathars in southern France in the 1200s. Now these people rebelled against the teachings of the Catholic Church. And they claimed, the Cathars' teaching was, that Jesus did not have a human body and that all worldly power was based on evil. That's what they saw in the Catholic Church. Their teachings were partly a rejection of everything that the Catholic Church had been teaching for a thousand years. And that the teachings that the Catholic Church had had no basis in the Bible. And also some of the Cathar teachings were partly based on Gnostic teachings that all matter is based on evil. These people, the Cathars, were primarily located in southern third of France, down towards the Mediterranean Sea. They were known to be non-violent. They were against any kind of fighting and war and slavery. And many of them were even so against any form of forced death that they were vegetarians. They abstained from eating any meat because an animal had to be killed. That's, I mean, that's a certain level of integrity in there. Now... This Cathar heresy was condemned brutally by the Catholic Church and was totally crushed by armies of French nobles after Pope Innocent III declared a crusade against the Cathars. They couldn't make a crusade anymore against the Muslims because they had lost that territory. So they would have a crusade against the Cathars. And what they did was they got the French rulers to kill these people by offering the lands that these Cathar people owned. And there were Cathar nobles, and there were Cathar peasants, and there were Cathar farmers. It was just a very, very popular um, cult, you might say, religion, church, whatever. And any French nobleman who was willing to kill a Cathar could have the land of the people that he killed. About one million people were massacred during a 20-year-long crusade. Many of the people who were killed were innocent men, women, and children who had nothing to do with Cathars, but who lived in that area. The next notable revolt was that of John Wycliffe in the 1300s in England, which was at that time a purely Catholic country. Wycliffe was a professor at Oxford University and strongly criticized the enormous and much-abused power of the monasteries and the monks in England and the corruption of the church and the false doctrines taught by the church that were totally opposite to what the Savior had taught. Now, Wycliffe was a highly educated man. As a professor, he could read the scriptures in Latin, which was the only form it was available in at that time, and he could see that the life of the leaders of the Catholic Church was not loving and not honest, as the Savior and Apostles had taught, and that they were not following the rules that the Savior and the Apostles had taught. He strongly opposed the Pope's threats of death if people studied the scriptures in their own language. And Wycliffe translated the Bible into English from the Catholic Latin Vulgate version, which was the version of the Bible that the Catholic Church approved. Now, the Bible was okay with the Catholic Church if it was in Latin. But you have to remember that nobody had spoken Latin for over a thousand years by the time Wycliffe was alive. Then, and there was, there was a statement that went out a little later about printing, when the printing, the printing wasn't quite in at this time with Wycliffe, it wasn't available, but there was an English uh, bishop who was quoted saying they had to root out, rout out, 
get rid of printing because of printing. If they didn't get rid of printing, printing would get rid of them. The people would know how truly evil and corrupt the church leaders were. And that was one of the fears they had about having the Bible translated into the language of the people because if the people could read it, they could compare how morally corrupt the leaders were compared to how the Savior and the apostles were. And they would get rid of the church leaders. They would pay no attention to them at the very least. In spite of persecution and a death sentence from the Pope, Wycliffe died a natural death. But 40 years later, 40 years after Wycliffe had died, the Catholic Church in England insisted on getting their petty revenge, and they ordered that his bones had to be dug up from his grave, and the bones were burned, and Wycliffe's ashes were thrown into a river so there would be no place to mark his grave. In Europe, the rebellion against the corruption of the Catholic Church was led by John Huss and by Jerome of Prague, both of whom were killed for their desires to have a more spiritually and scripturally centered church. And even though the church had been rotten to the core for a thousand years, there were still some men who were members of the church, priests in the church, and still wanted to be part of something better, and who tried to reform the church from within. One historian wrote, Previous to the opening of the 1500s, there had been comparatively few, though there had been some, like the Cathars in the south of France, and the Wycliffeites in England, and the Hussites in Bohemia, which was Czechoslovakia, who denied the supreme and infallible authority of the Pope in Rome, which was one of the reasons why these people had to be killed. The Popes had power, and they did not want to have any rebellion against that power. Speaking in a very general manner, it would be correct to say that at the close of the 1400s, all of the nations of Western Europe professed, willingly or under fear of death, the faith of the Latin or Roman Catholic Church and yielded obedience, reluctant or willingly, to the, Rome, to the papal see. The next notable revolution against the Papal Church occurred in Germany when Martin Luther, a Catholic monk of the Augustinian order and an instructor of the University of Wittenberg in 1517, publicly opposed and strongly denounced John Tetzel, the Dominican monk who was making huge amounts of money for the Pope by selling indulgences, guaranteeing that the person who paid the money would be forgiven for any sins he had committed or for his relatives who were residing in hell and being burned until the money hit the bottom of the box that the money was supposed to be put in. Luther was concerned that the whole system of church penances and selling forgiveness for, for sins was not according to the scriptures and was neither reasonable nor right. The Pope, Leo X, demanded that Luther repent and withdraw his criticism or that Luther would be thrown out of the church. Luther publicly burned the Pope's letter <laughs> and the revolt had started. Luther was summoned before a church council in 1521, and he defended himself with these words. He said, I cannot submit my faith either to the Pope or to the council, because it is as clear as the day that they have frequently erred and contradicted each other. Unless, therefore, I am convinced by the testimony of scriptures or by the clearest reasoning, unless I am persuaded by means of the passages I have quoted, and unless they thus render my conscience bound by the word of God. I cannot and will not retract, for it is unsafe for a Christian to speak against his conscience. Here I stand, I can do no other. May God help me. Amen. The revolt against Roman Catholic tyranny spread all across Europe. At a second council in 1529, an edict was issued against all the reformers who, had, who became known as Protestants because they were protesting against the church. Luther died in 1546, but the revolt continued. The Protestants soon argued over points of doctrine among themselves and broke up into many opposing sects. 